It's been a long time since I've seen Nico. And then there's this telegram. Sender unknown. It says Nico's dead. The rain was pattering onto the passenger plane from Madrid to Paris, while it was in its final descent. Dismal day in this big city. Strange seeing Rougerie after all those years. So let's go.
Nico, thank God you're okay. George. I thought something had happened to you. Why would you think that? Um, did I get it wrong completely? This telegram here. I don't know anything about it. You don't know anything about it. Is that all you have to say? For God's sake, I, I was worried about you. As you can see, I'm fine. Would you mind leaving now? I've got a lot of work to do. Nico, what's wrong with you? I travel all the way from America to be close to you, to look after you, to have you near me, and now you're so dismissive. Sorry, George. I'm busy right now. I'd better go then. Would be better. Hmm, strange. No, it makes no sense to talk. I'm kind of expecting a mad clown to jumping around the corner and knocking me out with his accordion now. My fears are proved to be unfounded. Instead, I'm standing in the middle of Paris, confused. I have questions, so many questions. Does Nico have anything to do with this telegram? If yes, why would she do a thing like that? I think about it for some time, until I see her, sitting there patiently, selling flowers. Just as though time had stopped, she helped me once. Why not a second time? I don't believe it. That nice old lady still sells flowers. Excuse me. Oui? Oh, it's you. Didn't I tell you you would come back? <laughs> um, yes, you sure did. What have you been doing all this time? I've been selling flowers, telling fortunes to the customers, the usual stuff. <laughs> well, it's not that usual, is it? It is to me. Don't you ever get fed up with selling flowers and telling fortunes? You know, I've done this for years now. After such a long time, it is difficult to start anything different. You could produce your own TV show. Something like, things you always wanted to know about your future. Not a bad idea, but I think I'm going to carry on selling my flowers. After all, I don't want to make a show of my gift. I understand. Good. No, I'm afraid I don't know what's going on with your girlfriend. Pardon? Ah, you were reading my mind. Well, it's in my nature to predict the conversational topics people are going to confront me with. <laughs> And what do I want to ask? You want to know what your girlfriend has been doing during the last couple of weeks. Damn it. You're absolutely right. I can't tell you anything precise. Only this. Your girlfriend went out late in the evening a lot. Was she accompanied by a worm? Pardon? A blonde man with a ponytail. Ugly, wears specs and shorts and goes by the name of Andre Labanu. I don't think so. Ah, uh, a lot off my mind. After a few days, her going out suddenly stopped. I hadn't seen her again till this morning. What do you mean? She didn't seem to leave her flat. That's not like her at all. Maybe you were talking to a customer when she came out. No, I don't think so. I have plenty of time to look at the scenery, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. Business is going badly. Well, you could put it like that. I'm sorry, I didn't want to rub salt into the wound. You still have me as a regular customer, and I will certainly be back. Can you tell me what's going on with the weather here in Paris? When I arrived, there was pouring rain and now bright sunshine. Yes, it's true. And it will rain again today. And it's going to be worse than this morning. Well then, I should take advantage of this beautiful weather. Besides, I have nothing better to do anyway. 
How about a nice little ice cream? Now that you mention it, good idea, actually. In Rouge Park, there is a very good ice cream parlor. Yes, I can. Could we handle this in the traditional way? Meaning, I ask first and you answer afterwards. That's more familiar to me. Oui. So, can you tell me if I'll go on a long journey again? Do you really want to know that? I guess so. You are going to die. What? If you're not careful. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's nothing special. You will meet someone unexpected. That blonde ponytailed worm? No, it's not him. It is a rather good-looking person. Male or female? That's five euros, please. Come on. I'm sorry, but soothing has its price. Pity. But uh, I'll do you a favor. I'll give you this newspaper. Wow, thanks. I'm honored. Why are you giving it to me? When the time comes, you'll know. Where do I find Roche Park? Do you know Hermetique de Naval, better known as Cite de Baphomet? I sure do. Years ago, I borrowed a bucket from a painter, tricked a bouncer, then I... Monsieur. Oh, sorry. What was I... Ah, yes. Two roads on from there, the park begins. It's not particularly big, but the ice cream parlor is worth a visit. Thanks for the tip. I must be going now. Maybe we'll see each other again. Yes, we will. Certainly. Oh, no. That sounds familiar. This is the newspaper the flower vendor gave me. It's folded twice. One of the headlines catches my eye. Café de la Chandelle Verte opens its gates at four o'clock this afternoon for the first time since the bombing. I should stop by. I find an envelope wrapped in the paper. It reads, for the right moment. There are three euros in the envelope. The flower vendor was right. Apart from the ice cream parlor, which is in fact an ice cream van, and the fountain, there isn't much here. I'm not thirsty. Well, it's... Well... Well, I'm not thirsty. Hmm. What can I do for you? I'd like three scoops of ice cream, please. One strawberry, one vanilla, and one chocolate. That's three euros. Oh, three euros. The vendor really knew what was going to happen. Donna, oh, no, don't tell me you haven't got any money. Nope. Three euros. You see? Here's your ice cream. Thanks. Ew! This ice cream tastes like dead socks! Gross! Ew! Monsieur, stop... stop 
Stobart, do you still remember me? Yes, certainly. Your friend Nico used to talk about you a lot. And besides, you're the man who helped me up and comforted me after the attack. And you didn't give me alcohol to drink. What have you been doing all these years after the attack? If I tell you that, you'll think I'm crazy. I'm doing that already. Uh, to microphone, je comprends. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Just thinking out loud. So... Whatever. After the bombing, I worked in a small cafe just around the corner. Didn't you have to recover from the shock? Not really, to be honest. Crazy. Didn't I tell you? When this cafe reopened, I didn't hesitate for a second. And here I am. It's just great to hear such a success story in these depressing times. I'll have a seat. If I can get you anything, just call me. We. Oui? Okay, thank you. Now, who's that? Oh, it's George, our friend and adventurer. Hi, Andre. What brings you back to Pauhi after all this time? Let's say it's private. It's something to do with Nico, oui? It's about Nico. Something about her uh, disappearance, oui? She disappeared? Didn't you know that? No, I didn't. She didn't tell me. A while ago, Nico went completely underground. For two or three weeks, nobody heard anything from her. Her employer was worried too, and I informed the police. Why didn't anyone tell me? I sent you a text message. Stop lying, Andre! Okay, I, I didn't think it necessary for you to get involved. I'm her boyfriend, goddammit. Ex-boyfriend, you mean? No, no. I usually mean exactly what leaves my mouth. Or whatever. Nico reappeared after these three weeks, just as though nothing had happened. What did she say? When I asked her about her being gone for so long, she only told me she had visited her mother in the country. That makes sense, I guess. Georges, her mother has been dead for nearly two years now. Maybe Nico thought I didn't know, or maybe... Maybe what? I don't know, but the worst is yet to come. It gets even worse? Oh yes, there was a rumor that Nico had tried to kill Bernard Lemar, the acting mayor of Paris. Do you really believe that? I don't know what to think. Since she has been meeting those people, she hasn't been who she used to be. Meeting what people? Come out with it, Andre! I don't have any details, but I know that she regularly attended those strange group meetings. One night I followed her, but near Montfasson, I lost track of her. Montfasson? But that's the place where... Exactly. The place where the Templars suffered their worst hour, and where regular near Templar meetings are held. It can't be true. Nico and the Templars? It makes absolutely no sense. Why not? The evidence clearly indicates that. Sounds like you're suspecting, Nico. I'm a student of history, George. I believe in facts, and the facts do not give a good impression of Nicole. My grandfather died, Nico isn't who she was, and is suspected of trying to assassinate the mayor. That's just incredible. Have you asked Nico about the attempted assassination, Andre? I did, but she denied everything. Did the local press cover the story? They did, George. The story went through all the papers for days. France Nationale had a particularly elaborate take on the topic. Interesting. Maybe the paper's archive can be of help to you. The papers must still be available from there. How did these rumors actually emerge? I mean, how's anyone supposed to know that Nico was the assassin? Is there any evidence? I'm sorry, Georges, but I must be going. See you later. What a pity to see you go. I don't know much yet. The only clue I have is the France Nationale, and I must find out what's behind those rumors. I have a feeling Nico might be in danger.
quite big and fuzzy. Great idea, cuddling into the blanket and pretending everything was fine. But I have to know what's wrong with Nico. Always useful. Bap ho. Hmm. A note. I can see the letters M E. Hmm. The bag seems to be quite full. My hands reach into the bag. Ouch! I cut myself on a sharp metal something. As I get it out, I realize it's a pair of scissors. Nasty. Again, my hands touch something, but this time I'm prepared for it. A hairpin. The last time I reach into Nico's handbag, I feel something- Oh my god, it's a small purple slip! Probably another of Andre's presents. That's sneak- Oh my god! No, I won't. Why should I- There's a poster with Broken Sword 2 on it. That's Nico's answering machine. I've got one. Nothing happens. The operating system. That's it. Baphomet. But what now? I type in Baphomet. It bleeps and buzzes. Then the screen displays a list of names and addresses. The right edge of the paper shows the coat of arms of the Parisian police. That must be a copy of an official document. Maybe an address list. Maybe Nico is working on a new story. I can't make heads or tails of it. Nico's computer. Nico's. Great idea. Kicking in the door, shouting, Hello, it's George Stobart, and I'm burgling this building. Maybe it would be wiser. A heavy door. Uh, not a bad idea. Uh, Now the hairpin is a Yeah, sure. I'll just put it in I can't. there's no point. It's pitch black in there. Excuse me. Oui? Um, yes. I must be going now. Yeah? Oh, no. Funny. 
Nico's name is misspelled. The unread message light is blinking on it. I know it's not exactly gentlemanly to listen to someone else's messages, even though in this case that someone else is my girlfriend. But I must know who called Nico. It's me. Since you're not in, I guess you're on your way to our meeting place. I expect you to be at the fountain on time. At the fountain? Which fountain did the voice mean? I've got lots of memories of this place. This time again, a trace led me here. I won't go in there again. An original Parisian tramp is sitting on the ground. There's a bottle of whiskey on the ground, too. He keeps playing around with the flashlight. Hi, my name is Stobart. George Stobart. And my name is Les. Homeless! Is that your flashlight? Yes, it is. And I'm not selling. What if I gave you something else in return? You don't have anything I want, believe me. If you knew what I sometimes carry around, I once had a fish in my pocket. But I'm sure you don't have the item of my dreams. Who knows? You have a woman slip with you, oui? You're not serious, are you? Oh, why not? Many guys have a feminine side. I don't. You do. Just look at your hairdo. What about it? It's feminine. It's not. It's just blonde. It's as masculine as my physique. That was the second thing I wanted to mention. Stop it. I'll see if I can get you a slip. I've got the slip. Give it here now. Here you are, but I want the flashlight. There you go. Hmm. I don't know, but the batteries seem to be dead. Thanks. An original Paris. There's a bo The batter. Now I've found an item that's worth risking my life for. Two freaking batteries. Well, it's better than nothing. Hmm. Power seems to be on. I'd rather... Damn, that hurt! But at least I have courageously acquired two Mafasol batteries. Great!
Damn, the batteries seem to be dead. Ouch! Ah! Oops! I should hurry up. I search the shelves. On the sh on the shelves, the these are the shelves of the. While searching the shelf, I find an issue that seems most interesting. The attempted assassination is criticized in bold letters. Reporter under suspicion of murder. The renowned Parisian journalist Nicole Collard was released without charge early on Monday evening after several hours of interrogation. According to Police Inspector Henry, suspicions of Miss Collard being involved in the murder of Mayor Bernard Lemire could not be backed up with hard evidence. Lemire had lived under the threat of repeated assassination attempts in recent months after overtly confronting Parisian cults and their totalitarian structures. The 34-year-old photographer Collard came under suspicion when the Irish journalist Ferdinand Arvin accused her of being involved with the assassination and membership of a cult called the Knights Templar. Irvin announced he would back up his accusations with hard evidence within the next couple of weeks. He is currently living in an unidentified safe house under 24-hour guard by police for his own safety. That makes no sense. Why should Nico want to kill anyone? I must learn something about that reporter, Irwin. But how? That was close. I seem to have made an enemy. Strange. The only one who knew I was here was Andre. I scanned this outdated newspaper for something useful, but except a report about a school that was hit by an outbreak of constipation, affecting hundreds of children, there's nothing of interest. I won't... As I look at the list again, the name Ferdinand Arvin catches my eye. That's the journalist mentioned in the same newspaper article as Nico. Right next to his name, it says Mouvage 12. That's the Hotel Ubu. Nico kills Mayer. Nico gets interrogated. Nico disappears. Reporter claims to have incriminating evidence. Nico reappears and has Arvin's secret address on her computer. I have a bad feeling about this. And not only because I'm talking like Andre. The chalkboard displays the different meals the hotel has on offer. Today's special is...
the chop. Oh no. Masia Stobar, nice to see you again. I can't say it's nice to see you. Flap, stop waving the gun around, will ya? Sorry, Guido. So, Monsieur Stobart, may I beg you to move? We don't want to make a scene, do we? No scene? No scene? Do you expect me to let myself be shot just like that? If you cooperate, nothing will happen to you. For the moment. What do you want? Oh, come on, Stobart. Don't be stupid. Since you stuck your nose into things that were none of your business seven years ago, you've been number one on the list of enemies of the Templars. Stop that garbage. The Templars are gone. If you say so. Just a coincidence that your girlfriend met with people who call themselves the Templars, don't you think? Liar! Nico would never get involved with those idiots! I could see a broad smirk spreading all over his face. You've met Mademoiselle Collard today? Yes. Why? I'm just curious. If you touch her... That need not concern you anymore. Not since she's been going out with that fair-haired history professor. Andre? Right, that's his name. The two make an excellent match, don't you think, Monsieur Stobart? Another lie. Every word that leaves your mouth is a lie, Guido! How did you manage to get out of the church in Bannockburn, anyway? None of your business. Can I shoot him now? Not yet, Flap. Not yet. Oh, man. Can't we just be friends? What? And lose out on two million euros? What are two million euros compared to a real, long-lasting friendship? So, the Templars still exist? Yes, and they're stronger than before. If you think you wiped out all the Templars during your Scottish adventure, you are sadly mistaken, Mr. Stobart. And you guys work for them again? Monsieur Stobart, we are the kind of people who are often called mercenaries. We get our money, and that's all that counts for matters to us. Believe me, that's gonna change. I'll stop you again this time, even if I have to travel around the globe for it. Ah, but you see, Monsieur Stobart, that's exactly what Flap and I are here to prevent.